Good evening guys. Once again, welcome to usmlevideos.net and uh, thank you for visiting our website again this evening. Tonight I want to discuss a few questions and uh, let us start with uh, delirium. What is the leading cause of delirium? I will give you some choices. A. Alcohol abuse B. Depression C. Dementia D. Malnutrition E. Stroke What is your answer? Think about it and uh, give an answer. The answer is uh, C. Dementia. Dementia is the leading risk factor for delirium. You see delirium is the acute confusional state. It is typically multifactorial. There is uh, an interaction between delirium, development of delirium and, uh, uh, the, uh, and the exposure to the precipitating factors. Now, delirium affects like uh, up to 30% of hospitalized patients who are medically ill and uh, in some patients like uh, cancer patients like 25% of them develop delirium. HIV infection like 40% of them develop delirium. And uh, post-operative patients like 50% of them develop delirium in the hospitalization. And uh, nursing home residents, especially people older than 75 years, up to 60% of them can develop delirium. But you see, the leading risk factor is dementia. Because fully two-thirds of delirium occurs in patients with dementia. And dementia it predisposes the brains for the formation of delirium. That's why you should identify delirium in patients with dementia. Whenever you see confusion and agitation, you should help these patients because unless you recognize delirium in these patients, you are not going to treat them. And many of these patients, dementia patients, they develop underlying uh, medical problems and later develop delirium. And there are many, many... Now let us go for the next question. What is the initial step in the management of hypercalcemia of malignancy? A. Aggressive dehydration B. Fluid restriction C. Phosphate depletion D. IV bisphosphonates E. IV Lasix so what is the initial step in the management of hypercalcemia of malignancy? What do you do as the first step? Do you fluid restrict or do you phosphate depletion or do you use IV bisphosphonates or do you use IV Lasix or do you do aggressive rehydration? The answer is A. Aggressive rehydration. Whenever you see a patient with uh, hypercalcemia, you should first start aggressive rehydration. That's the very first step. And then other things should be contemplated like diuresis with the furosemide and then phosphorus replacement if uh, hypophosphatemia is present. And uh, you can also use IV bisphosphonates you can actually give phosphorus replacement if hypophosphatemia is present. So IV bisphosphonates, you see, we use IV bisphosphonates in the treatment and uh, usually we use bisphosphonates in the treatment of uh, osteoporosis. Why? Because bisphosphonates, they increase the deposition of calcium in the bones. That is the reason. So by using IV bisphosphonates, we are decreasing the serum calcium level. In the same way, IV Lasix. Lasix, it increases the renal excretion of calcium. So, you are actually rehydrating patients, giving a lot of water. 
then you are also using IV bisphosphonates to remove the calcium from the blood and deposit into the bones then you are using IV Lasix in order to increase the renal excretion of calcium so the initial step is aggressive rehydration let's go to the next question okay the next question what is the leading cause of death from bariatric surgery? Bariatric surgery as you know is uh, for obesity and uh, what is the leading cause of death? A. Infection B. Pulmonary embolism C. Ischemic bowel D. Pneumothorax E. Myocardial infection So what is the leading cause of death? after bariatric surgery choose your answer the answer is B pulmonary embolism according to the International Bariatric Surgery Registry the leading cause of death following bariatric surgery is pulmonary embolism that's a thing you need to remember it's not infection, it's not ischemic bowel, it's not pneumothorax, it's not myocardial infection. It is pulmonary embolism. Now, what are the indications for bariatric surgery? BMI, body mass index, should be more than 40 kg per meter square. It is more than 40. Or BMI, more than 35 kg per meter square with serious comorbid factors such as diabetes, substructural sleep apnea or coronary artery disease. So those are the indications. And uh, as a passing, we can also actually review the medications for obesity. What are the main medications we have for obesity? Some, you can uh, discuss them like this sympathomimetic drugs like sibutramine, fentanyl, and diethylpropion. Second group is drugs that alter the fat digestion like Orlistat. Third class antidepressants like fluoxetine and bupropion. Fourth class anti epileptic drugs like topiramate and zonazamide. Fifth group is diabetes drugs like metformin, pramlinthide, and exenatide. So